All right. Hey folks. So today's question is going to be, should I book or should I cut? I want to speak about this from a coach's perspective, somebody who handles these questions and picks a direction for people to go and actually gets people results. Because I think my perspective is quite different from what I've seen when I've looked around for this topic online. And I want to give you guys my point of view. Also, over the course of the video, I want to go over some common body types and solutions for them. And then I want to give you some practical advice. So this video is going to be full of practical takeaways. If you are confused about whether you should bulk or cut, follow on and I want to give you some direction. But before we get into that, I want to do all the good YouTube stuff. I have so far not resorted to trying to poke the YouTube algorithm with inflammatory titles and all kinds of other stuff. But that can only continue if you guys continue to do the amazing things that you always do, which is drop comments, um, subscribe if you haven't done this already. Also share these videos around, just get the word out, which has been great recently, by the way, you guys have been amazing. Also, if you are interested in coaching, I'm a full-time coach. That is how I put bread on the table. So there's a link in the description if you're interested in coaching. Now, I want to start with just an open and honest discussion about the question. So you've got a guy who's asking the question, should I bulk or should I cook? Let's just look at the type of person who asks that question before we even move on. So what I think normally happens is these questions are answered particularly poorly. Usually the way it goes is somebody makes a video about bulking and cutting and they give some advice to say, yes, if you're this body type, you should be bulking. If you're this body type, you should be cutting. I don't think that's the right way to answer this question. And I'm going to just explain to you why. Because of this, whether you're a hobby bodybuilder like I am, or whether you're an amateur bodybuilder, competitive, whatever you are on the spectrum, if you are a bodybuilder of some sort, you're probably going to have a bulk and a cutting plan. At some parts of the year, you're going to be bulking, some parts of the year, you're going to be cutting. That might be related to dates, or that might be related to just how your body feels and what the mirror is telling you, whatever. But you're going to be in the flow. So there's never going to be a question, should I bulk or should I cut? Yeah, sure. At the end of a bulk, you might ask a question, uh, is it time to cut? But you're never going to sit there and say, should I bulk or should I cut? Because you're already doing something. So this question is not a question that's asked by people already in the process of bulking and cutting. So who is it asked by? It's asked usually by guys who don't have a clue, who are beginners, who are new to the lifestyle. That's who is asked by. These are very specialized terms. They're specialized terms because if you're doing bulking and cutting, you are different to the rest of the population. The average Jack and Joe walks down the street and maybe goes to the gym every once in a while. They don't bulk or cut. They just go, they eat just crap, whatever they eat, and they train however they train. Bulking and cutting are highly specialized terms. So if you're doing those things, you're already involved in a lifestyle. So my first point is that people who are asking the question typically are new to at least a dietary part of the lifestyle. And as a result, I don't think their first point of call should be to bulk or to cut. I think the first point of call for people like that is to practice some dietary discipline first, nail some basics. Before you have the pressure of bulking or cutting, just nail some basics. It's that simple. If I have a completely newbie client, that's what I do. We just nail some basics. And I will go over at the end of the video, some of the things I recommend. But for now, just to say broadly, that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for some dietary discipline. Can you maintain a reasonable diet for 14 days without just completely going off the bandwagon? So dietary discipline, what that means for me is it's not just knowing what to do and it's not just practicing it for a couple of days. It's being on plan seven, 14, 21 days. I want to see that you can do it because until you can do it consistently, there's no point in me getting you to bulk a cut. I think this is a massive, massive point. And by the way, I'll just say, if you guys who are, who are listening to this are seasoned hobby bodybuilders and you are in the process of bulking and cutting, but you're consistently going off plan and binging or, or whatever it is, or missing meals, you don't need to bulk a cut. Reverse back, pull back a step, just zoom out. Think to yourself, maybe I need to actually just practice some dietary discipline first. That's what I say dietary discipline first, then you can add in the extra level of complexity of bulking and cutting. Like I definitely don't think you should be cutting if you can't even maintain a regular diet for two, three weeks at a time, because then you have the additional downward pressure 
of having to deal with a calorie deficit. So my first point in all this is the very question itself is wrong because people who are already bulking and cutting will not ask this question. Their question should be, what should I do next? And the people who are completely new to this do not need to be either bulking or cutting. They just need some dietary discipline first. So that's my first point. And I, and I genuinely, from the videos I've seen, I think that point is different to what people are normally told. That's what I say. I normally see influencers answering this question with some type of advice to either bulk or cut. I just don't think that's the right thing to do. Apply some dietary discipline first. Nail some basics. If you go from the typical American diet or whatever else you were doing before to a regular, good, reasonable diet, you will build muscle and drop body fat. So you don't need to do anything special right now. You just need to apply some discipline, get some control of your eating life. So that's my first point. And I think it's a pretty solid point. And I'll also say to add to that, if you are currently in the process of bulking and cutting and you can't hold down a reasonable diet for two or three weeks at a time, pull back. Pull back, forget bulking, cutting, just work on having a diet plan which you can stick to. Now, second part of this video, I do want to go over some specific scenarios and what your possible advice might be. So, generally speaking, if you've got somebody who's skinny, fat, and small, yeah, so let's say they're, they're skinny, but they've got a layer of fat around them and they're just small. They're not overly fat, they're just small. I would say bulk. You've got to gain some mass. But again, the first thing is get some dietary discipline first. What do you do after that? So in this scenario, skinny, fat, and small bulk. Now, there is an offshoot of the skinny, fat, and small person. And that is the skinny, fat, and small, but fat person. So you do have the most unfortunate scenario, which is guys who are small, but also have a lot of fat on them. That's not a good combination. I would say in that situation, again, Get some dietary discipline first. And I would say bulking is probably a good option, but you have to be very, very aware of your health because that is the worst combination for diabetes. If you're small and you have a lot of fat on you, it's the worst combination. So you're going to run into problems because you don't have enough muscle mass to act as a glucose sink and also your fat. Next scenario is just the fat guy. Okay, now the fat guy, in my experience, typically speaking, they don't necessarily have big appetites. I would go out on a limb and say every fat guy binges. Whether you want to call it a binge or not, you do. Okay. You under eat for short periods of time and then you just massively binge. Whether that's beer and burgers or whatever it is, whatever your deal is. I am 100% convinced at this stage after having worked with a bunch of people, guys who are in that just out and out fat range, you're binges. You might not see it. You might not call it that yourself, but that's what you are. So again, the first thing to do with you guys is apply some dietary discipline because I guarantee you guys, you probably don't even have a great appetite. Probably Monday to Friday, you're probably about okay. Maybe slightly higher portions than the next person, but you're a big guy. So it's reasonable. But then on weekends and evenings, all hell breaks loose. Typically speaking, the big fat guys, they're not eating a high amount of food all the time. It's just fits and spurts. You're binging and then you're starving. So you get all the negatives and none of the positives. So yeah, the fat guy, I think just get on a reasonable amount of food. You will be surprised how much you can eat. So if you actually feed yourself, you're going to be able to stop this binge purge cycle. I can give you some examples. There's a guy I used to coach, Ben. He's a footballer, not a fat guy, but he's a big guy. And he made it to semi-pro under me, mostly because I took care of his nutrition and also his training. So he got a lot fitter. He always had natural talent, but under me, he got a lot fitter and more muscular as well. But anyway, when he came to me, he was trying to diet on the usual amount, 1,800 calories, 1,900 calories, 2,000 calories, and he kept binging. Like, Faz, I don't understand. I just keep binging. He's like, yeah, well, let's try something. So I raised his calories, raised him up first to 2,500. He kept losing weight. The binges are becoming less frequent. Up to again, 2,700 calories. Still the same, keeps losing weight and less binges. 3,000 calories, keeps losing weight. No binges at this point. 3,300 calories is what he was maintaining on. So you've got a guy who's, in this case, just had a lot of output, which is very similar to a big guy, really. It's just his metabolism is quite high. But he was dieting like he was 108 pounds, you know, and small. Every time he waited to a deficit, 
it was like a 1500 calorie deficit. So of course he's going to be hungry. Of course he's going to binge. And I think that's what a lot of big guys do. A lot of fat guys will just create this cycle of going, right, I want to slim down. Maybe I want to be healthy. And they don't realize how much they need to feed themselves. If you are a 250 pound guy, like your maintenance is going to be pretty high. Like to sustain that level of size, whether it's muscle or fat, you're going to have to be eating a lot of food. Now, the unfortunate thing is most of those guys don't think they eat a lot of food, but if you average out the weekends, not just the weekdays, they're eating a hell of a lot. So with the big fat guys, you just got to put them on a lot of food and just apply a small deficit and let them come down slowly. You don't want to over diet them. The final type of person I'm going to talk about is the over dieter. So the over dieter is somebody who has tried to diet many times, maybe even continuously for past three, four years, even, you know, for that long. Now that could be a combination of diet, but also activity levels, excessive activity levels. And so they've got to the point where they've created so much diet fatigue. They just can't handle a diet. Anytime they try a diet, they just binge. So you've got these guys who end up actually gaining quite a lot of body fat because they're over dieting. And you think to yourself, what a rubbish situation that is. You know, you've been trying to diet for four years and your physique's gotten worse. And this is different to the fat guy. The fat guy is binging because he's starving, then feeding, starving, feeding. This guy, the over dieter, he's binging because his body is just sick and tired of trying to diet. So the solution for the over dieter is you've got to stop dieting for a while. Yes, you've got to practice some dietary discipline, but you've got to just stop trying to diet. There's too much negative connotations, both physical and psychological attached to a deficit. You've got to just stop dieting. You need to give that some time to just relax. And I will say at this point, both the fat guy and the over dieter who binge have this in common. That is their binging might not even be a medical condition. It might not be a psychological thing. Okay. I know this is going to sound very controversial, but it's the truth. There might not be an actual psychological problem there. It might literally just be that their diet sucks. It's the truth. Now it's a lot easier for people to think, oh, I've got a binge eating disorder than it is for them to accept that their shitty diet, which hasn't worked is the problem because it's easier for them to say, well, I've got a binge eating disorder because that's almost like it's out of their control. Whereas if you say to them, actually, look, your diet fucking sucks. That's a lot harder for them to accept because then it's a mistake they've made. So people are always quick to try and blame a condition when with a lot of these guys, it's just self diagnosed. They've never been to a doctor and diagnosed themselves as having a binge eating disorder. It's just their diet fucking sucks. They're probably the fat guy who engages in the binge purge cycle because he starves himself and then he overfeeds. Yeah. Or the over dieter who's got so much diet fatigue build up. Anytime he even sniffs a diet, he just starts to binge. Or it could be both. You could be both the fat guy and the over dieter. I'm not saying every single time they don't have a binge eating disorder, but a lot of times it's the truth. And I would probably venture to say more often than not, their diet just sucks and they've self diagnosed themselves as having a binge eating disorder. I would say if they just got on a decent diet, the kind of things that I promote, they'd be fine. There you go. Maybe a controversial view, but I'm going to stand by it because that's my experience. Okay. Right. I want to end this video by giving you guys some practical advice in terms of things that I do to help my clients. So first of all, protein. Okay. If you're still on low protein in 2024, you're done. Unless you can show me you've got a 220 pound physique with abs. Cool. Then fine. Cool. All good. Like natural hypertrophy. Looks great. Fantastic. Eats low protein. So don't hold him up as an example. If you look like shit, I'm talking here to people where these things aren't working. The first thing which I see makes a massive difference is protein intake. My protein recommendations are generally higher than most of the rest of the evidence-based community. I'm right. They're all wrong. They'll catch up on that soon. And then none of them will give me any credit because that's exactly how it goes. I recommend roughly about one gram per pound to 1.5 grams per pound. And that's assuming you're relatively lean. Now, if you're a lot fatter than that, I generally go off centimeters in height. So that high protein helps both types of people, the underweight people and the overweight people either gain mass and strength confidently if you're underweight or if you're overweight, actually stick to your diet and progress your training. Super important. I would say even more important for naturals to do that than it is for enhanced guys. 
Enhance guys, you can get away with all kinds of bullshit. Now, we, next thing I would look at is meal timing. One thing I'm not a big fan of at all anymore is daily 24 hour fast. I think that goes alongside the, the fat guy and the over dieter. A lot of those guys will try that kind of stuff and they'll just binge over and over again. And they just don't connect the dots. I think between four to six meals is a good amount. But we're talking guys here, guys of a reasonable size. Yeah, sure, you can go maybe go down to three meals a day if you're a female or a smaller guy. But generally speaking, four to six meals for a regular medium to average size guy. Okay. And the last thing is hydration. Hydration, as I've said many times, is not just water, it's water and electrolytes. I generally aim for about five grams each of potassium and sodium. I have made videos on that in the past. I'm not going to go into that again. Those are the areas that I find help somebody apply dietary discipline where they had done previously. Because remember, the first goal isn't to decide whether you're bulking or cutting. The first goal is just to try and make it through two, three, four weeks of of a diet, stick to your macros, stick to your meal plan, do something reasonable without going off and binging or, or, or just being skinny. Hopefully, if you've come across this video and you've been searching online for questions to do with bulk and cutting, hopefully this gives you a much more realistic and accurate picture of what you should be doing. I don't think it's a question which needs to be asked because typically speaking, people who need to know this question, they don't need to bulk or cut. They need to get some dietary discipline first. And for everybody else, we're already bulking and cutting. It's not a question for us. So the question itself is bullshit, basically. Right, guys, peace out.